Mustard comes to Peter, he jail, clanging sounding all so well. Who the weary, weary convict guarded in his prison cell. In the early morning, he hears it clanging loudly, ringing long, rousing him for troubled slumber to his toil the hill day long. Lusted comes to Peter, he jail, clanging the sound, he knows it well. Heard that morning, heard that evening, heard for years the prison bell. Her Majesty's Prison, Peterhead. Since 1888, it's housed some of the most infamous criminals in Scotland. Victorian conditions, rooftop protests, riots and hostage-taking have given the jail a mythical status. When it happened, it was generally serious. Oh, well, people would, would they nearly be killed. Tonight, we tell the story of Scotland's hardest lock-up and how the jail, dubbed the Hate Factory, is being reinvented as a prison for the 21st century. 90 million pounds is to be spent building a state-of-the-art super jail right next to the old prison. So it's bright and airy. I mean, you won't step away from a primary lodge in here. Doesn't look like a prison, does it? No. Doesn't it? Goodbye and good riddance, Peterhead. My all the prisoners take a pop at you. I all wish you dead. If the northeast corner of Scotland hadn't been battered by wind and huge waves, then it's very unlikely Peterhead Jail would ever have been built. In order to offer safety to the fishing fleet, a harbour of refuge had to be constructed. And maritime experts in the 1880s reckoned Peterhead, one of the largest fish markets in Europe at the time, was the perfect place to build the breakwaters. Although the fishing industry was very successful, there wasn't a pool of floating labour, as it were. So the ideal solution would be to build a convict prison in the area where you could use the convicts to build the breakwater. HMP Peter Head was born. The sea walls were to be built from local red granite. Prisoners were taken from the jail up to the quarries by train. There, under the watchful eyes of prison officers armed with cutlasses and rifles, the chain gangs smashed up the rocks. The work in the quarries, of course, was really very, very bone-breaking. They were given a choice whether they wanted to swing a seven-pound or a 14-pound hammer, both pretty hefty implements, and much of the work in the quarries and down at the yard in the early days uh, was pure manual labour, hard labour. Building first the South Breakwater, then the second North Sea Wall, was a Herculean task. Granite blocks, some as high as 40 feet, were stacked on top of each other by giant Titan cranes. The largest breakwater was almost a thousand yards long. Nearly 70 years after construction started, the final granite was laid in 1956. 